Hello world, I'm just hoping I can knock this video out in one take. Uh, I made a video about my Beatles cassette collection and as I normally go off the point, which I quite often do, I admit that, I quickly threw in the nugget that the UK had a cassette mix of the full Magical Mystery Tour LP released in 1973 with proper stereo versions of the songs on that weren't in stereo on the original American version of it. And somebody picked up on that and asked me a question about whether or not the 2009 remasters used the newer stereo version of the album to mix from, as opposed to the old American 1967 version, which had loads of fake stereo tracks on. I gave this person a longer reply than he probably wanted, but hopefully I can clear up for you exactly what's on what, okay? The short answer to his question is yes, I think so, because I think that the 2009 remaster was based on George Martin's digital transfer of the album in 1988, I think it was, um, and that was definitely all stereo. Uh, I think the Magical Mystery Tour movie had just been re-released on video at that time as well and that was certainly all stereo, so there you go. All right, but the earlier versions and the ones that probably a lot of Beatles fans are likely to want to collect are different. Now I think I may have spoken about this at length in another video, but possibly because I included um, some vinyl transfer of a Beatles song at the same time. I've had to take a lot of my Beatles videos down. This one, I'm not going to include anything that is non-copyright friendly. So hopefully it'll stay up. In fact, it will stay up because the copyright is mine. Okay, because I'm making the video. Right, 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 right. Okay, it's a bit of a minefield. This is what I said. This is the reply that I've put to his question. You can go ahead and read it, but... I can talk around it as well and hopefully this video will reach more people than get to my cassette video. As you might know, Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane were going to be on Sgt Pepper. And I know that Strawberry Fields had a stereo mix made in 1967. Now I say 1967, it could have been towards the end of 1966 because by that time, um, EMI were desperate for a new Beatles single. They'd stopped touring and I think people were saying, you know, are they going to split up? Are they going to split up and everything? And they were saying, no, we're not going to split up. And I think um, EMI were cacking themselves a little bit, especially when at the beginning of 1967, they didn't have anything that they said, you know, was definitely going to be a single. So they just released Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane as a double A side. It's a superb double A side, by the way. Um, and then that meant that as far as the Beatles were concerned, they didn't like issuing songs twice. So most of the albums don't contain any singles at all. And this meant that Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane couldn't go onto Sgt Pepper. But they did make a stereo mix around 66, 67, I'm just going to say 67 just to be just for clarity, okay? And you can hear that on any stereo vinyl album released in America up to at least the blue 1967 to 70 album which was released in 1973, just to make things clear. In 1971, for whatever reason, possibly because of the impending German Magical Mystery Tour album release, both songs were re remixed for stereo and George Martin wanted to improve on the famous heavy stroke orchestral edit that happens around about 59 seconds into the song. I actually think that the 1967 mix disguises that edit better. On the 1971 mix, in the middle of John singing, let me take you down, right, and I've put a slash in between you and down because it's around about there that you can hear the mellotron which is that funny keyboard instrument that they use to get the flute sound um,
cut short and then the orchestra uh, orchestra arriving very abruptly on the right hand side. If you play that bit in your iPhone without the left headphone it will be very obvious where the orchestra comes in. If you swap the headphones around you'll hear the Mellotron being cut short. There are a number of other edits on that 1971 version that were all but inaudible on the 1967 mix. For example, the Indian rundown before the no one I think is in my tree bit was plucked on a thing which I think is called a sword mandala, something like that. But it's the bit that goes bling, 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 bling. On the, the mix that we all know, because, well, all the UK fans have ever heard, that starts in one channel and swoop, swoops over to the other because that's the 1971 mix. Okay, it didn't always do so. The 1967 mix just had that in one speaker, the right hand speaker, and it kind of fades out much more gradually so you don't hear the what's about to happen. Okay. Um, the plectrum was dropped inside the instrument accidentally at the end of that run. So it goes plonk, 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 plonk. <laughs> okay, so, and you can hear that much more clearly on the 1971 version. Right, the 1971 version also fades out to silence and then it fades up a bit and then fades out a bit later so it's given a slightly longer second fade out than the 1967 version. On the 1967 version John only says cranberry sauce once and it is cranberry sauce he says not I buried Paul okay. Um, on the 1971 version you've got it twice cranberry sauce twice okay. Sadly the, in my opinion, better 1967 stereo mix was denied to the UK fans until 1976 when the American Magical Mystery Tour LP was released over here. Again, All You Need Is Love wasn't given a stereo mix until after the split and when they did, it revealed George Harrison's terrible flub of the guitar solo that plays during the second Love 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 course. On the mono, it kind of just faded down and blended in. The stereo guitar solo goes kind of wayward and is then cut very abruptly. Now I just want to quickly offer my explanation of why that should be so because normally George was George Harrison this is was such a perfectionist that he wouldn't have let that go at least not without a fight okay but they just released Sergeant Pepper it had been a huge creative outpouring for them. Then up came this all live satellite -y, one world documentary thing which was actually really boring. You can see it on YouTube actually although the Beatles bit I, I can't find the Beatles bit but you know you have to sit through hours and hours and hours of this broadcast it was, which was being, being broadcast via satellite simultaneously all around the world and when they came to London they went to the Beatles Abbey Road studio to hear them ostensibly play their or play their new single live. That didn't actually because what I've said about the Beatles before is they didn't want to release singles off albums, at least not for the British market. In America, they kind of had their own uh, sort of CEOs and stuff like that making the decisions for them. But in, in the UK, the Beatles themselves did not want to release singles that came from albums. So if this One World broadcast had happened today, you would probably have heard the Beatles sing one of the songs off Sgt Pepper but because it was the Beatles they wanted something new to show so they were under a lot of pressure to get that recording done okay it was done incredibly quickly and so they had this backing track I think possibly they weren't miming I, I mean, there would have been vocal backing track 
uh, as part of that. But the lead vocal, I think, was left for John to sing live on the night, as it were. So he sings a different version of the vocal on this One World broadcast. And then they quickly retaped his vocal, did a better version of it for the single. Okay? Because um, in those days, no one had video recorders, you see. So once that One World thing had been broadcast, that was it. If you've got a warts and all vocal performance on a single, you're going to hear that every single time. Okay, um, it's it's a, a, a complete sort of ear sore, as it were. Okay, um, so they had to re-record the vocal, but everything else was left as it is, including that really duff guitar solo. It really is appalling. Okay, and I think George would probably agree. They tried to fix it when they re-released -re the Yellow Submarine soundtrack and they called it the Yellow Submarine song track. In other words, all the songs that were in Yellow Submarine, including All You Need Is Love, were given stereo remixes um, just because, I think. And they tried to fix that flub even then, but it still sounds weird. It still sounds weird. Right, but the American stereo release of the Magical Mystery Tour album uses a fake stereo version derived from the mono mix that was used for the single in the UK. This was later used on the United States, but not the UK version of 1967 to 1970. Penny Lane has at least two fake stereo mixes because Penny Lane was a single. It wasn't given a stereo mix. By the time that they thought, oh blimey, we best remix Penny Lane for stereo, because it was gonna go on Sgt Pepper, don't forget, they would already made the decision to release those two songs as singles. They'd presumably already done the Strawberry Fields stereo version, thinking it was going on the album, but hadn't got round to doing the Penny Lane version. Then they didn't do the Penny Lane version because it was just going on a single, all right? So when, in 1967, when America wanted to release uh, a Magical Mystery Tour stereo LP with Penny Lane on it, they had to make a stereo, uh, sorry, a fake stereo mix from the mono mix because there wasn't a stereo version for them to use. Okay, that also ended up on the 1973 Blue Beatles 1967 to 70 album. Hello Goodbye is a bit of a puzzle. It was a UK single, so would only have had a mono mix in 1967. But the UK 1967 to 70 contains a stereo mix, and I'm not sure why or when it was done. And the US version of that LP contains a mono mix, despite the fact that their version of Magical Mystery Tour contained a stereo mix. So it's all as clear as mud, okay? I'll try and sum it up slightly briefly. In 1967, the US Magical Mystery Tour LP was released containing an early stereo mix of Strawberry Fields, that's the 66 stroke 67 one, a stereo Hello Goodbye, a fake stereo Penny Lane, and fake stereo All You Need Is Love. In the UK, only Side 1 was released as a double EP in either mono or stereo formats. Hence the confusion, with a capital C, over stereo issues for the Side 2 songs. Okay, so it is by and large, you know, the, the confusion over what mixes are available and stuff is really what's on Side 2 of the LP, because it wasn't an issue over here. In the early 1970s, I think it was somewhere between 1971 and 1973, put it that way, the German version of Magical Mystery Tour was released, containing full stereo mixes of the songs that were in fake stereo on the US and that 1971 remix of Strawberry Fields Forever. In 1973, a UK cassette-only release 
of magic of the magical mystery tour lp was released as per the german issue this is because um because cassettes were quite new as a hi-fi format um they the only two albums that were released simultaneously or nearly simultaneously shall we say um as the vinyl lps at least in the uk were sergeant pepper and abbey road all the others had to wait okay their original cassette cases by the way were white okay even the sergeant pepper i haven't got it to show you here but um the, the sergeant pepper one that red version that i showed you with the red sort of top on uh, uh, over it and the little bit of artwork on the inside that was the very first release the 67 release of sergeant pepper on cassette okay so by the time that they're getting round to releasing the other albums on cassette magical mystery tour was i suppose a bit of a problem because in the uk there are only i think five five or six songs on there not enough for a cassette cassettes cost more than lps in those days as well so i suppose they felt oh well you know so many people in the uk are importing that american version of magical mystery tour perhaps we'll put that version on as the cassette as they've done in germany hence they used the german edition which contained stereo versions of all the fake stereos and monos and whatnots okay so that's why that happened I should, because you couldn't get away with just releasing an ep on cassette and by that time anyway in the UK, the EP was a dead format. Right, in 1973, the UK, 1967 to 70, Blue Album. All the songs were in full stereo, okay? In the US, it contains the 67 mix, the 1967 mix of Strawberry Fields, the fake stereo Penny Lane with a bit less bass than uh, Magical Mystery Tour, the mono Hello Goodbye, and the fake stereo All You Need Is Love. Okay. Um, the Red Album, and this is another by the by really, the Red Album in America also contained um, where a song hadn't been released in stereo over here it contained either mono or fake stereos so there were the American versions of the songs and the mixes that were on uh, the red Beatles um, 62 to 66 album and I think one of the songs has a false start on it I think it might be Nowhere Man I think Nowhere Man includes a couple of bits of chatter or something like that before it started. Um, and that was on the beat on the American version, but had been chopped off the English version, probably quite rightly. Okay. And finally, in 1976, the UK release of Magical Mystery Tour as per the US LP version. That meant that whereas even though the the UK had stereo mixes of all the songs that were on there, they still couldn't be bothered to make a new master tape for it. They just just accepted the American master tape and just said, you know, that's how it'll be. So, yeah. And it wasn't released to any kind of fanfare or sort of any kind of advertising or anything like that. I think it just appeared in the shops. And I think... Because, as I said, loads of people were trying to get that album as a full album and importing it from the US. I think it was the only album that the US ever did that provided any kind of value for money. Because with all the other ones, and you've heard me say this before, they were really greedy. They took songs off of 
one album, withheld them till the next one, then took songs off the next one so that they could make room for the ones done before. And it was all a, it was all a bit of a palaver, you know? So for instance, songs from uh, on Revolver, um, the American Revolver has some songs that were left over from Rubber Soul because they released a shorter Rubber Soul and put some songs on that were on our Help LP. So it was basically them being greedy to try and make more albums than was strictly necessary because there are also compilations like The Beatles Yesterday and Today and uh, just all, all, all kinds of things like that. And to me, having heard the Beatles, I've, I've never heard the American albums and the American track orders, I have to say. And I'm sorry if this offends some of my American viewers, but we certainly got the best deal in terms of the albums. The Beatles actually put these songs into this order on this particular LP and rejected that song and that song, made that one a single, didn't make that one a single, put that one on another LP and whatever, and they made the choices, okay? Once they went over to America, you see, even the fake stereo mixes were not made in England, they were made in America to appear on the American market and presumably in other territories where fake stereo versions and whatnot else is, were needed then those countries did it. Otherwise, you'd just have poor George Martin having a nervous breakdown, I think, because um, he, he just wouldn't have been able to have kept up with it. So, yeah, um, you know, they, you know, the American bosses, studio bosses, whatever, record companies said, right, we want your next four Beatles songs because we want to put this particular album out. And so they basically shipped over half finished versions early mono versions and stuff like that and said right you know release it in mono release it as fake stereo if you have to kind of thing so whatever what happened was that whereas we got a full stereo revolver lp the best the americans ever got was a revolver lp that had some songs in fake stereo um for example okay um and that's really where I'm going to end it now. Otherwise, I'm just going to go on and on and on. And really, do not ever ask me about I'm the Walrus because that is just so complicated. Even though the UK had a mono and a stereo version, there are about six different versions that appeared on different records in, in the um, United States. And it is just an absolute minefield. So don't even go there, she shrug. Okay, see you later.